Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for sticking with me through that break. If you are just tuning in, we just finished covering in segment three the year two quarterbacks that might take a step up. We're not talking about C.J. Stroud. He's already taken that step in year one. We're talking about Bryce Young, Will Levis, those two guys. Uh, I think Will Levis has the potential to take a bigger step, although I do think Bryce Young will definitely improve. I'm less certain on the fact that Will Levis will 100% improve. The second segment, we talked a little bit about the... uh, no hitter that was thrown by Ronel Blanco last night, and the Astros, an incredible feat, the eighth start of Blanco's career, he throws a no hitter, something that a lot of Hall of Fame pitchers don't even do. Very, very impressive. And in our first segment, we talked about Caitlin Clark. Caitlin Clark, her 41, 12, and 7 performance, near triple double to send Iowa to the Final Four to take on UConn and Paige Beckers on Friday. A women's basketball is heating up like never before. It's very, very exciting. But like I was saying before we went to break, in our fourth and final segment here, we're going to move into some playoff races. Specifically, uh, we talked about the NBA playoff races yesterday. You can go check that out on uh, YouTube. But today we're going to talk about the NHL playoff races. There are a couple of really, really heated races coming up. Uh, down the wire with like five games left to play for most of these teams. Uh, But before we get into that, remember that if you would like to be an even bigger part of the show than you already are, all you need to do is go to gsmcpodcast.net. Leave a tip or donation. It'll pop up on the bottom of the screen. We'll have a little discussion about what you had to say. Again, you can control what the contents of the show are. If you have a burning question that you would like me to answer, all you need to do is is go to gsmcpodcast.net, ask that question. We will have a discussion on the show about what you had to say. Once again, that link to leave a tip or donation is gsmcpodcast.net. We appreciate anything and everything that you guys do give. But like I was saying, we are going to, in our fourth and final segment of the show, talk a little about the NHL playoff race. Uh, The NHL is wrapping up. There are five or six games left for most teams in this season. You take a look at the division races. Most of those are wrapped up at this point, especially in the West. The the big contention point for the playoffs is the final seed in the East. There's So for those who are unaware of how playoffs work in hockey, there are eight teams from each conference that make it. The first three teams from each division, the top three teams from each division make it. So you have three, there's two divisions in each conference. So the top three teams from each division make it. And then you have two wild cards. And the wild cards can come from any division, just whoever has the best, the most rec- the most points. Right now, the way, the way that points are scored, you get two points for a win, no points for a loss, and one point if you lose in overtime. So, the way that the points are, set, are, are put out right now, you have guys uh, in the East tied right now. So, the Washington Capitals currently hold that final wild card spot. They have 82 points. The Detroit Red Wings have 82 as well. Right behind them, the Islanders have 79, so two games away. Uh, and they have played one less game than the Red Wings. So they are, when you're doing math, you assume a win in this situation. They're technically one point behind the Red Wings. Although the Capitals have played two less games than the Red Wings and one less game than the Islanders. But that is a very, very tough battle there. They've been going back and forth. We talk about uh, the division as well. Uh, The Flyers are only one point ahead of the Capitals. They are both in that same Metropolitan Division, 83 points to 82 points. Coming down the stretch here, we kind of get a little bit of early playoff hockey. The Flyers and the Capitals play uh, final night of the season. There is a world where that determines who is in and who is out of the playoffs. The Red Wings play the Capitals coming up soon. Uh, There are lots of huge matchups coming up right around the corner in hockey. If you are a hockey fan, now is the time for you to uh, really lock in. 
take a look at at what at uh, the way that the standings are shaping up. Uh, there's a couple surprises, obviously, for those who are just casual fans. You might hear Capitals and think Alex Ovechkin very good. Uh, Sidney Crosby and the Penguins are not even sniffing the playoff race right now. It's kind of a changing of the guard season right now. You have a lot of young guys coming up. A lot. The Bruins are still up there, but you have mostly these young up-and-coming teams, the Toronto Maple Leafs, the uh, Edmonton Oilers. All these guys are, you know, locking, locking it in for uh, the new era, the Colorado Avalanche. All these... All these teams that are really just stepping up to the plate, showing you this new era of hockey. Uh, but like I was saying, the big race is in the East. Now, that's not to say that there aren't other races to take a look at. Uh, we talked about some division races at the top. There's, there still hasn't been a pull-away winner for the best record in the league. Right now, if the season ended today, the Dallas Stars would win the president's trophy which is what's given to the team that is the that has the the best regular season. They have 103 points right behind them the Bruins who had the best season of all time last season have 101 points. There's uh the Rangers have 104, the Carolina Hurricanes also have 101 and the Avalanche have 100. So do the Vancouver Canucks. There are five teams with 100-plus points as we get down to the season, and no one has really separated themselves. These playoffs are going to be crazy. There isn't really a true number one team in either and on either side of the league. Both, all of these teams have weaknesses. The NHL playoffs are going to be extra wild this year, especially in the East, where you have, you know most likely five teams that are going to have 100 points. That never happens. Five out of eight teams having 100 points, that is indicative of just how top-heavy the Eastern Conference really is. You know, you have a bunch of guys sitting there at the bottom not really getting anything done this season. Uh, The Columbus Blue Jackets, for instance, only have 62 points. Not a very good look. Uh, Not a very good team. But as we go down the stretch, I, I expect the, the Flyers have been kind of faltering. They've lost five in a row. Uh, I think the Capitals are going to end up taking that, that last uh, Metropolitan Division spot. And then the Red Wings are going to take the last Wild Card spot. So the Flyers are probably going to drop out of it. At least that's what I'm seeing right now. They don't have the easiest schedule either, you know. The Capitals play a couple of of big of big games coming up. They play the Flyers at the end of the season. They play the Red Wings later on. But, you know, the Flyers, they play New York, New Jersey, Washington to close out their season. That That's not an easy stretch. That's a really, really tough stretch of hockey uh, as we head into the Stanley Cup playoffs. It's going to be a wild one. I'm very, very excited to see exactly how this Stanley Cup goes uh, and what happens at the end of the season, but I do expect the Flyers to be the odd man out of that playoff race. Anyway, thank you everybody so much for tuning in to today's episode of Sports by GSMC Podcast Network. I've been your host, Jeremy Lapidus. We'll be back here, same time, same place tomorrow. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Bye-bye. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go... Mm-hmm.